Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is not the worst dinosaur movie with Jurassic in the title. It's not even the worst live action movie with Jurassic in the title. As soon as you step away from actual quality movies, it seems like the dinosaur genre has only two extremes. Either it's a hunky dory animated movie for little babies, or it's a trashy horror movie with laughable gore effects. And since the most popular dinosaur franchise is Jurassic Park, of course there are numerous dinosaur horror movies trying to cash in on that popularity. These ripoffs all follow the same formula. Make a dinosaur movie for as little money as possible, slap a title on it that sounds similar to Jurassic Park and then release the DVD in the hopes that people mistake it for the real thing or want to watch it ironically. The quality of the movie itself does not even matter. As soon as you have bought the DVD, they have already achieved their goal. I wouldn't even be surprised if they actually thought of the title first and then made the film. Unfortunately, the popularity of Jurassic Park has led to people using the word Jurassic in association with anything dinosaur related. The average Joe probably has no idea that the Jurassic is just one of many geological eras and that most of Jurassic Park's dinosaurs like T-Rex, Velociraptor or Triceratops don't even come from the Jurassic but the Cretaceous period. But Jurassic is easier to pronounce I guess, so IMDB is flooded with movies that have Jurassic in their title. Like Jurassic City, Jurassic School, Jurassic Hunters aka Cowboys vs Dinosaurs because modern teenagers don't know about the Valley of Guanji, Jurassic Island, Primeval Empire. Because if someone doesn't know Jurassic Park, they might know Primeval, right? No wait, this movie is actually called Extinction Jurassic Predators. Which is not to be confused with Extinction Predator X, which apparently got re-released under the title Jurassic Predator. Which is not to be confused with this 2018 movie called Jurassic Predator, which has nothing to do with Jurassic Prey. The Jurassic Games. Get it? Like The Hunger Games? Remember The Hunger Games? This movie came out in 2018, Jesus Christ. Jurassic Shark. Okay, that even rhymes with Jurassic Park, but the Megalodon shark isn't from the Jurassic, it lived long after dinosaurs had already become extinct. Jurassic Dark. No wait, this one is actually called Raptor Ranch. Jurassic Attack. Triassic Attack. That doesn't even make any sense, the Triassic is even further removed from the Cretaceous than the Jurassic, so a T-Rex is even more out of place. Triassic World. That's not what a Triassic World looks like, this is. And check out this DVD cover. Ferocious creatures. Uh, what? Who, who said that? You can't just put quotation marks around words and act like that's a quote from somebody praising your movie. How the hell is ferocious creatures even praised? The quote could just be dinosaurs and it would make just as much sense. The Jurassic Dead. It's time to stop! Like I already said, all these movies are supposed to sell on title alone and no care is put into the actual movie itself. To be as cheap as possible, they usually take place in only one or two locations, either somewhere in the woods or in some bland building. The acting is bad, the dialogue is bad, the CGI is terrible, the gore effects are terrible, the plot is an afterthought. And because all these movies are equally bad and forgettable, they tend to blend into each other. That means I don't even have to watch them all. Because if these filmmakers didn't put any effort into their films, why should I put any effort into this video? I selected the movies I review in this video after one criterion. Whether the full movie was available on YouTube for free. At the time of making this video, these movies have already been removed from YouTube. So I should probably count myself lucky for getting the following four movies. Jurassic City, Jurassic Shark, Jurassic Prey and the Jurassic Games. Let's begin. Jurassic City comes from The Asylum, a company whose entire business model is releasing terrible cheap movies under titles that are the clickbait equivalent of YouTube videos. Either they make a title that is suspiciously similar to the latest Hollywood blockbuster or they just put the word shark into a randomizer. You could replace this movie with most of the other dinosaur movies I mentioned like Jurassic Attack and Triassic World and even the ones that don't have Jurassic in their name like Age of the Dinosaurs or Raptor Ranch. 
and it wouldn't matter. They are all equally terrible and forgettable. So instead of reviewing any of those, I will just review this one. Oh yeah, and the only English version I found on YouTube has Indonesian subtitles, but who gives a fuck? Man, I feel so bad for Dino Raul. Even if you don't know his name, you have probably seen his dinosaur model somewhere on the internet. They are among the best 3D dinosaurs you can find. Sure, they're lacking in feathers, but the anatomy is accurate. So it's really frustrating to see his high quality dinosaur models so poorly animated in such a trash movie. I can't be bothered to learn the names of any of these characters. So here we have some military guy and his evil boss. What does it say? Vidcon connecting. That's not Vidcon, this is Vidcon. For some reason they have a convoy of three dinosaurs and need to take a stop at a prison. This fucking prison is where 90% of the movie takes place. It makes the whole movie so fucking boring. Meanwhile three girls get taken to the same prison for drunk driving. There we are introduced to the rest of the dinosaurs menu. The prison boss and a bunch of criminals including this murderer. I don't remember much about my mama. Aside from bludgeoning her in her bed when I was nine. Wake me up inside. Wake up. Wake me up inside. I know you're all wondering what's going on. Truth is, I'm not sure. Hey, that's what the producer said when making this movie. Unfortunately, we've had another breach. No, no, not that kind of breach. An escaped dinosaur from the facility kills two girls at the pool and wow, it looks like it's really there. Meanwhile at the prison. Are you sure those things can't escape? It's reinforced steel. No way they can get out. A few moments later. <laughs> of course, the dinosaurs are bulletproof. This is the kind of stuff that only happens in stupid dinosaur movies. The cargo trucks. There's something inside of them. What do you mean inside? I, I can't even say. It's some kind of animal. Oh come on, don't tell me you wouldn't recognize a fucking dinosaur. Oh, Considering how many people the dinosaurs kill, they don't seem to actually be hungry. They just enjoy killing. One dinosaur kills a woman and happens to smash the control panel in such a way that the doors open. This is the kind of stuff that only happens in stupid dinosaur movies. I'm now going to skip over most of the movie because it enters a pattern. Long scenes of the prisoners standing around and talking, followed by awful dinosaur attack scenes. It gets boring really, really fast. The most notable moment is when one woman encounters a dinosaur while she's on drugs. Oh my god, it's the rabbit of Care Bannock! That rabbit's got a vicious street a mile wide, it's a killer! While this is going on, the military guy is hunting down the one dinosaur that killed the girls at the pool. I love that they're driving through an urban neighborhood and he's just bombarding it with a grenade launcher. Suddenly, there's a huge swarm of these dinosaurs loose in the city, but we don't get to see that, we're stuck at the prison. Uh, what was the name of this movie again? Jurassic City! They should have called it Jurassic Jail, those fuck it producers! The prison boss enters the control room, but the dinosaur that smashed the control panel isn't there. Which means it got out of that room and closed the door behind it. And you thought Jurassic Park had smart dinosaurs. The dinosaur attacks him, but since it can't be killed by bullets, he kills it with bad CG. The murderer kills a dinosaur with a small caliber gun. Because it's not like we've already seen them being bulletproof against much stronger guns. Throughout the movie this guy flip flops between helping the other people to survive and just being a criminal scumbag. Now he decides to be a criminal scumbag again. Come here, give daddy wolf some love. So I guess this time the dinosaur is actually the savior? Anyway, the girls blow them up with a car bomb. <laughs> Meanwhile, the military guy arrives at the facility of his boss, which has giant dinosaurs on the streets. Why couldn't we have watched this movie instead? T-Rex quarter is loose, you know about that? We encountered a massive pack of velociraptors heading towards the city. Fuck you! You take Dino Raul's Monolophosaurus and Giganotosaurus, and then you just label them Velociraptors and T-Rex? Fuck you! 
I didn't even know it's possible to care this little about a movie. But if you think that was lazy writing, just wait till you hear the evil boss's motivation. All my pets are on the loose. I'm gonna ride into town and save the day. It's the first step on a White House run. Okay, I have some questions. Why did you create dinosaurs instead of just faking a terrorist attack? How did you manage to create dinosaurs? How do you plan on actually stopping all these dinosaurs, considering that they are notoriously difficult to kill? What was even the point of that one convoy if you wanted to release them anyway? Why has nobody else noticed yet that there's a swarm of dinosaurs running around on the streets? Can we get any more explanation on that? I guess not. The two surviving girls escape from the prison and see that suddenly the entire city is in chaos. There are dinosaurs in the streets, pterosaurs attacking helicopters, this movie finally looks entertaining. Are you kidding me? After spending so much time inside this building, the movie ends just when we get to the part where dinosaurs roam the cities. This is the kind of stuff that only happens in stupid dinosaur movies. And that was Jurassic City. And it's fucking terrible. If you think this movie looks kinda entertaining in a bad B-movie way, remember that I cut out almost the entire plot and all the boring scenes of people talking because that's just filler for the dinosaur attacks, which are so terribly animated that I don't want to show those either. And turning Dino Raul's quality models into such shit is just the icing on the cake. Fuck this movie and fuck the asylum. The only noteworthy thing about Jurassic Shark is that for a while it was the lowest rated movie on IMDb. Since then it has been replaced by Kartoffelsalat, a crowdfunded movie made by some German YouTubers. It's possibly Germany's worst crime against humanity post World War II. Speaking of Germany, we have not only one Jurassic Shark movie, but an entire trilogy. If you are wondering how that is possible, that's because Jurassic Shark 2 is actually a TV movie from 1998 called Great White. And Jurassic Shark 3 is actually a movie from 2002 called Megalodon. They just took these decade old movies and slapped a new name onto them to trick people into buying them. Because the Jurassic Shark franchise is such a money maker. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. Here comes the money. Jurassic Shark 3 isn't even the best Megalodon movie with a 3 in the title. That's obviously Shark Attack 3 Megalodon, which has groundbreaking special effects. <laughs> and the greatest line in movie history. What do you say I take you home and eat your pussy? How to pick up thoughts 101. All this trivia is much more interesting than the film itself because Jurassic Shark is just an empty void. If Jurassic City is a low budget film, then this is a no budget film. It's literally just some people walking around in the field. No lighting, no sets unless you would seriously call this a set. The camera footage is mostly handheld because they couldn't afford a tripod. No microphones. It's too deep. You're drilling too deep. I don't even think any of these people are actual actors. This movie's like an amateur porn video. Mine is the porn. No! You drilled too deep! But still with the innuendos. And the scantily clad girls. I'm 99% sure this movie was filmed by a creep because there are these long gratuitous shots of these girls in their bikinis. The movie starts with a Windows Movie Maker text scroll of Megalodon fact someone looked up from Wikipedia. And they even mentioned that the Megalodon existed 28 to 1.5 million years ago. Hey you idiots, that's the Miocene and Pliocene, not the Jurassic. Your title doesn't make any sense. God, I hate it when that happens. This is one of those movies where you can tell it's absolute garbage just from the very first shot.
Seriously, were they trying to make this as incompetent as possible, thinking it would be funny? Well, guess what? It's not funny, it's fucking annoying. So apparently this is an oil drilling facility and it somehow released a prehistoric megalodon shark into the lake because... You drilled too deep! They never bother to properly explain how that's possible. In fact, multiple times the characters point out that it shouldn't be possible. <laughs> that's like totally stupid, you know? You know there's no sharks in fresh water, right? The girls go into the water and we see the shark's point of view. The guy filming this is in so shallow water that you can see the ground. Which seems totally reasonable for a shark 16 meters long. I can't describe how insufferable this movie is. Just watch this. Now imagine this for one hour. Yes. Just one hour. This entire movie has a running time of one hour 18 minutes. And that's only because the credits are moving as slow as possible. They couldn't even be bothered to make a feature length movie. But I am glad they did, because that means I don't have to suffer for long. After 10 minutes we get our actual title card. I hope you like staring at text fading in and out in front of a water backdrop because this goes on for two and a half minutes. It doesn't matter how many names you show, this isn't a real movie, it's a fucking scam. Sure, there is supposedly a plot, like this is a group of criminals who have stolen a painting and are on the run and this is a group of students led by this girl who wants to research that oil drilling facility. But the execution is just pointless filler and I am not talking about long scenes of them standing around and talking like in Jurassic City, although there's plenty of those. What the hell was that thing man? I mean literal filler where they are just walking around in the field. This whole thing is made to be as cost effective as possible. For example, there are two scenes where a boat is supposed to flip over by the shark, but they don't actually show it because that would be too expensive. Even the shark attacks are mostly just people acting like they're dragged down by something. So they got me! Grab! Yeah, that's what it looks like to be grabbed by a 16 meter shark. But don't worry, eventually we get to see the shark in all its glory. What can I even say? The CGI model is bland, the movement is stiff, the lighting is terrible and nobody cared how a 16 meter shark can get into water shallow enough for a person to stand in. So thank you Danny Rosen for these amazing visual effects. I'm sure you have a great career ahead of you. In an Amazon warehouse. The girls and the criminals meet and wander around the forest for way too long until they arrive at the oil facility. There they meet the scientist who is responsible for this because... Too deep. We, we drilled too deep. And the criminals make him walk into the water. He also takes his lab coat off so we can see the product placement on his back. This thing had product placement. A fucking company wanted to be associated with this movie. God do I hate obvious product placement. The shark eats him off screen because now they finally realize that the water is way too shallow to actually show this. Cool. Uh, what? The girls run away but somehow they run into one of the criminals again. One girl gets pushed into the water and... Oh god! I prefer the scenes where you don't see the shark. Thank you very much. Next the criminals are trying to scare away the shark with dynamite. There! There it is! What? 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 <laughs> what? What is happening? The shark isn't even biting anything. But just when you thought this movie couldn't give less of a fuck about itself, this happens. What? 
So this gigantic shark jumped out of the water, ate this bitch without swallowing her whole, then turned around in the air to go back into the water? <laughs> That's like totally stupid, you know? So now the girls try to kill the shark with dynamite. Free! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! But no horror movies complete without a twist that there was another shark the whole time. And that was Jurassic Shark. This might as well have been one hour of black screen, which would still have been more watchable. The only reason this exists is because people like movies with giant sharks. And if you really want to watch a movie with a giant prehistoric shark, just watch The Mac. At least that one doesn't look like crap. Nothing could be worse than Jurassic Shark. Jurassic Prey is even worse than Jurassic Shark. A few people told me to review this and I just want to say I hate you all so much. This is the first and last time I listen to my comment section. Based on the cover this one is even more of a scam than Jurassic Shark. At least the creature in that movie looks like a shark but here? Why are we still here? Just to suffer. A puppet! It's a fucking puppet head and some puppet feet. Not even a complete body. That's your dinosaur. Good job, Red Piper. You can join Danny Rosen in the Amazon warehouse. Is this even supposed to be a movie or is it just a one hour long prank video on the audience? After the opening credits, we see two cops arresting a serial killer. While Jurassic Shark has just long scenes of people wandering around in silence, this movie has long scenes of people running around with terrible music. Say. They left his twitching eye in? Was everyone trying to make this as bad as possible? Or is he supposed to be winking at the audience? This is the kind of stuff that only happens at- Meanwhile, a random girl goes hiking and gets attacked by the dinosaur. Wow, right now Ray Harryhausen is rolling so fast in his grave he's turning into a perpetual motion machine. We are then introduced to the main guy, some washed up actor who used to be in a television show, which this movie explains by blocking the screen with a fake poster while they are still talking. That's not me editing this, this is the movie. The guy goes off with two criminals to rob a bank and the masks they use for this guys are from his old TV show. I'll wear the stupid mask. It'll be ironic. Oh, the movie thinks it's self-aware and that somehow makes everything okay. Yeah, no, that makes it even worse. That means you know you are making a terrible movie and you know what you are creating is essentially a scam. Fuck everyone involved in this production. They rob the bank and take this girl hostage. Doesn't that music get you excited? Uh, wasn't this movie actually about a killer dinosaur? No, wait, no, 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 please, please go back to the robbers. The girl pretends she has to pee so she can send a message to this guy. Beach. Be. Ready. Uh, no, what you actually texted was beach. Be ready with your gilub. Got no autocorrect? I wish I was that tree. Ugh. Then they arrive at a cabin. Oh, fuck. I can't believe I would ever say I prefer Jurassic Shark scenes of silence, but this music doesn't fit at all. Was this movie made by an alien that doesn't understand how movies work? At night, one guy goes out to the toilet. Don't you love how they use that stock horror sound effect? Speaking of stock music, pretty sure I've heard that music before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Plinkett, we'll be there right away. 
Hey Mike, we gotta get over to Mr. Plinkett so we can fix his VCR. Ah, uh, uh, Jay. Okay, so some people have told me I use too many red letter media clips in my videos, but in this case, how could I not do it? This guy even looks like Mike Stoklasa if he was a homeless man. So the woman steals the money while the rest is sleeping and then dumps it into the lake. I have no idea why. And then she meets this guy and she's flirting with him for no reason. But at this one, nobody can see us. Why do all these low budget movies turn into creep shows? Like Jurassic Shark, it's like watching an amateur porn video without the actual porn. There's probably dinosaur porn out there with better production value than this. Please don't tell me. Please don't tell me if there actually is. Please don't tell me. Ed! What? I just walked out of here with all our money. God, is that bitch a fucking terrible person. But maybe he had a friend up there? He got no other friends. He can't have gotten very far on foot. Wow, did you hear that? That's some quality sound editing. He got no other friends. He Outside the cabin, they get attacked by the dinosaur. Yeah, that pretty much sums up my reaction to this whole thing too. All that dynamiting at the rock quarry, all the killings up here, do you think it could have, you know, made something come up like in those fucking Godzilla movies? It's like the writer watched Jurassic Shark and said, we can make an explanation that's even more half-assed. Now the cops arrive at the yep. cabin, together with the wife of the main guy. You bastard! Damn, she must be strong Trina. considering how he just falls to the ground. I can explain. I'll explain later. For now, run, run! Trina, I love you. I've always loved you. I did this for us, so I could be the man I used to be for you again. Andy. <laughs> okay, that's so stupid, that actually made me laugh. Now the dinosaur attacks the cop car. Seriously? They're not even bothering with putting the dinosaur in the right frames? Even Jurassic Shark got at least that right? This movie, this is what hell feels like. This is the last thing I will see before I die. Look, even the fire on his fucking torch is fake. The cop and the dinosaur fall into the water and the girl gets picked up by some random guy. Jackie? Wait, what are you doing out here? This guy is the fucking director. It's weird because I thought I had already seen the director at the beginning of the movie. Now that seems more like the kind of person who would make a movie like this. And that was Jurassic Prey, or Meat Eaters, or whatever it's called. If this was a movie made by a 12 year old, I would say, oh, that's cute, now go back to playing Fortnite. But it's made by a bunch of grown ups, so I can only say, Stop it, get some help. The visual effects in Jurassic Prey make Jurassic City look like Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Some people might say it's charming that they use a puppet and stop motion effects, but considering that the dinosaur isn't even properly embedded into most of the shots makes it clear this was done out of sheer laziness. The characters and plotlines are all over the place. The music choices are terrible, except for this part. And the director is a fucking creep. This is a finely crafted <laughs> fetish film. Finally crafted. I apologize to Dino Time. You are not the worst dinosaur movie of all time. This is. And I hope you are all happy now because I'm not going to devote any more time to this. Give me the final movie so I can finish this review and delete that garbage from my laptop. The Jurassic Games is the Citizen Kane of Jurassic Park ripoffs. At first glance, you might think this is the worst of them just because of how many different movies it rips off. As you can tell from the title, it's like the Hunger Games if they had dinosaurs in it. However, the participants are death row convicts like in The Running Man and it's set inside a virtual reality like in Ready Player One. What still makes this work however is the whole TV show angle. This movie knows its target audience exactly and it's constantly meta about it. Build tension? No, our viewers don't care about tension, Brian. They just want to see the contestants die horribly. Why do you think they picked dinosaurs to be the things we're running away from? 
They tested better than robots. Now this is the kind of self-awareness I like. It's not just lazily throwing its arms up in the air and saying, It'll be ironic. This movie has actual in-universe justifications for how it's executed. And it's well executed. Even this forest lake looks more cinematic than what you see in Jurassic Shark or Jurassic Prey. The movie jumps right into the action and gives us the backstory of the different participants throughout the movie via TV recaps. It's still a lot of exposition about characters I don't really care about, but the presentation by the TV hosts makes it more watchable. Our protagonist is a family father accused of a crime he didn't commit. The other participants are crazy murderers and criminals. They are all acting appropriately hammy. The only really bad actors are the kids of our protagonist, who may as well be robots. The TV host has a saber-toothed mask and I'm not sure if that looks dumb or awesome. Oh, oh, be careful with that. I'll need you to do as I say or... boom. Hey, they have the necklaces from Suicide Squad. You all know that when you die in here, you die for real. Oh my god, it saw that online. But now it's time for the real reason I love this movie. Ah, oh, look at this! An actually good looking dinosaur! Ah, oh, look at those proportions and that skull shape! Mwah! Perfect! This T Rex was modeled by Vlad Konstantinov. He creates accurate dinosaur models, which look even better than those of Dino Raul. It's just a shame that the filmmakers probably told him to make the raptor scaly instead of feathered, but at least they have the correct hand anatomy. So, as awesome as these dinosaurs are, there is a minor problem. The movie doesn't use them much. Most of the movie is just watching these people go at each other's throats. And while that is more like the Hunger Games, aren't the dinosaurs the whole selling point? Well, at least this movie isn't boring to look at because there's actual production design. Seriously, the filmmakers put more effort into the fake TV show within their movie than the Asylum puts into its actual movies. I'm Tucker, I'm innocent. I'm Albert and I'm gonna eat you. They even have a fake commercial for action figures. I love it. I can't stress enough how much care was put into this movie. Even the fake YouTube layout is perfect. The compilation video, the clickbait video, even fucking loot boxes are there. And watching people die on a popular video platform, we're halfway there. Most of them make it to the next stage of the game, a maze. No wait, it's just one of those mazes you find on the backside of cereal boxes. I thought they would actually walk around in a maze. This is stupid. Oh, now they are in an actual maze. Thank god I was getting worried. We now reach another moment that I can't decide whether to label as dumb or awesome. Fighting raptors with martial arts. Well, they had to one up Dunkle Essential somehow. I'm just wondering why are these raptors just standing there staring at him? Why don't they just jump on him? Yeah, just like that. The others escape through a ventilation shaft. Why does this maze have one random vent? Because it's a virtual reality and the layout doesn't need to make sense. That also allows them to throw several different locations into this movie. Just look at that. Actual scenery that is pleasing to look at. Unfortunately, the CGI becomes less pleasing to look at during this part. There is a carnivorous plant, a triceratops, pterosaurs, a swarm of trilobites and a saber-toothed cat. And they all look rather crappy. We also get to see what happens when someone does not make it to the next safe zone of the game. I guess they blew most of their budget on the T-Rex and the Raptors, but I can understand that. You're the one that's gonna kill me. Oh honey, you're already dead. Nani? Our protagonist and this girl are the only ones who reach the final stage of the game. They are chained in a desert, the keys are buried in the sand and they need to reach a safe zone. Well, this is anticlimactic. Can't you make that more exciting? Yes, just like that.
Okay, it's kinda dumb how the T-Rex is just standing there instead of attacking anyone, but I don't mind because I just get to marvel at this beautiful model. There's only one way to make this even better. And just when you thought this movie couldn't get better, the T-Rexes fight each other. Finally, one of these movies has realized that the only thing better than humans vs dinosaurs is dinosaurs vs dinosaurs. Of course, our protagonist manages to reach the safe zone and win the game. However, the studio is hijacked by a group of activists who want to end the Jurassic Games show forever, because they don't support its cruelty. A SWAT team arrives to deal with the activists and the whole scene is in slow motion because they were just asking for it to be memed. Our protagonist survives and gets to live with his terrible kid actors. And the Jurassic Games show is able to continue despite its controversy. And now it's giving its dinosaurs guns. And I have no problem with that idea because this movie isn't ruining any pre-established franchise. And that was the Jurassic Games and it was legitimately entertaining. The characters are stereotypes and the plot is not really original but the actors are doing their best. At least some of them. I love the satire elements because they make it clear this was made by humans with a functioning brain who put a lot of love, thought and effort into this project. And of course the main reason I love this are Vlad Konstantinov's T-Rexes. Seriously. Every commenter saying the dinosaurs look bad has no idea what the fuck they're talking about. You think those are terrible effects? Shut the fuck up. And even if the effects are bad, this takes place inside a virtual world. That's such a perfect way to explain away any bad CG, I am surprised nobody in the movie itself commented on that. Good job Ryan Belgard. You turned what could have been a pile of shit into an actual gem. Shout out to all the low budget filmmakers out there. Make more movies like this one and less like this one. And if you make movies like these, fuck off. I sincerely recommend this movie. Just keep in mind there's a lot of scenes of people talking or fighting each other and you might find some of that boring, but I would say it's worth it just for that final T-Rex fight. This movie deserves a better rating on IMDb than 3.7. And this video does not deserve to have so many dislikes. Neither does this one. And now that I have found the best low budget Jurassic Park ripoff of all time, I will never bother with any of these dinosaur trash movies ever again. I'll go back to reviewing animated movies from South Korea. Those seem to be more popular anyway. And I'd better throw in a top 10 list for good measure. Goodbye und auf Wiedersehen.
I'm 99% sure this movie was filmed by a creep because there are these uncomfortably because there are these uncomfortably uncomfortable uncomfortably I'm 99% sure this movie was filmed by a creep because there are these uncomfortably long